What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. Today I'm very very excited to be bringing you Typical Canadians The Warehouse. So this is actually a first track release and as I fly through the map here I think you'll agree with me that for a first track release it is absolutely insane. So what we've got here today is uh, Typical Canadian is usually known as like a gear creator so this is his very very first track slash compound and it consists of a, a lovely looking arena cross track which we're going through here and i like the aspect of kind of going out of the say well still within the, the warehouse but outside and back in we've also got a lovely little enduro cross section which right here which as we all know i am a massive massive fan of my enduro anything enduro in this game i absolutely stand so i can't wait to do some laps around that We've also got a rough whooped out sand track, almost like a turny sand track through here. So it'll be very interesting to see if I can get some sort of a flow going, double my way around the track and have a good time. And then finally, as a little extra bonus, if I work my way through the trees and go through here, we've got a like a jump line, which you said, which should, looks quite cool. We go up and over a digger, another double round here, pop a left, another jump, a small jump into a little hip. And then if we go all the way around, loop back around, we actually jump up onto a truck. Oh, actually, hang on, what's, what's this right here? Someone's a simp. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> we jump up onto the truck. We then jump up onto the roof of the warehouse. Be interesting to see how the bike handles on here. And then back off to complete the loop. And I think that just looks so, so sick. Very, very creative. So let's get into it and let's ride some bikes. Okie dokie, here we go. And first of all, before I do any riding, I just want to say how fresh does the setup look? Let's go Team Great Britain. If you don't want any spoilers, skip ahead like a minute. If you do want spoilers, oh my god, we done it boys. Yesterday, Team Great Britain, somehow we managed to win our first MX of Nations in MX Bikes. Very, very happy days. Very happy for the boys. Uh, it was myself, uh, Hurls and Cam. And we actually had Hurls' PC died on the start of one of the motos. So we didn't even have the luxury of being able to drop a race. Every single one of our races counted. And we just managed to uh, beat USA to the win by a singular point. And it all came down to the last lap. We had Hurls in second and Cam in sixth or seventh i think uh, and then they both moved up one spot on the last lap each which caused us to win by a single point so really really good racing uh, i rode very mid in moto one uh, i managed to play sixth overall and then in moto two for me very very happy with that i managed to come second overall out of 250s and 450s in the rain at redbud hitting some hitting those uphill triples so both the leap and the other uphill triple my, my rider must have the strongest arms known to mankind because I was framing it every single lap just like that <laughs> and trying to survive it and it was just all around a really good event. I'm very happy they done it in the rain because that did play to my strengths massively so big shout out to Chicken for doing that and I think the rain on this game is I do think it's a bit of a, a big equaliser and I'm glad they've done it as well because I think those triples on 250s should be near impossible and they were near impossible we couldn't get them cleanly at all a lot of time we wouldn't even get the front wheel open over we would land just on top of it and bounce and have to try and correct the uh, the bounce that it gave us it was a really well run event it the whole day flowed smoothly oh my god what am I doing I'm gonna spin around here that finish line jump again I'm, s I'm so sorry typical Canadian I'm doing your track so dirty right here uh, you guys will be happy to know that this uh, that, well this track is on the shop but very very cheap he's priced it at 69 cents which I absolutely love. And he did want to preface that the reason that it is so cheap is not because it's the first track or because it's a bad track in any way. He just thought the number 69 was a funny number to do out. So massive respect for him for pricing it so cheaply for us. So reach into your uh, reach into your wallets or slide in your your mum's your mum's purse or whatever. Get a get a dollar on there. Get it for 69 cents. I'm sure it will be worth it. And so far, so good. I think I'm, I think I'd pay 69 cents just for this bloody arena cross track. So nice. Oh my god! Thank God that roof hasn't got collisions. I would have absolutely decapitated myself. That finish line jump so far seems to be the hardest one. And I, I don't know if you guys can tell in my voice. I'm kind of I'm still riding the high from yesterday. Okay. So my my races were Moto One and Moto Two. So my job was done, and I just had to watch Moto3 back with Cam and Holes trying to bring it home. I was genuinely more nervous about watching the race than I was doing my own one. Um, I think in some ways got a little bit lucky throughout the event, because being on a 250, trying to outdrag 450s on the start was near impossible. But I had very, very close to inside gates both times. 
So I managed to just kind of sneak up the inside. I came out in Moto 1 about fifth or so, I want to say, and then finished sixth, which wasn't too terrible. And then in Moto 2, I actually got the whole shot. Um, Lucas Arid has passed me about three laps in. He was on the 450 and he just disappeared. You know, he was able to hit the, the triples clean and I think he won by about, yeah, it's between, I think it was between 30 and 40 seconds in the end. He won that Moto by uh, just over me. Um, there was some bar banging going on. I want to apologize uh, publicly to Wavo. So we got together, I think, twice in that moto. We was battling for P2. Uh, Wavo was the other USA rider, so it was absolutely vital that I beat him. Now, he was riding a 450, so it was only a matter of time before he eventually caught up and passed. Now, first time he caught up with me, we was going into the corner before the Roccos, and I was just on the inside of him, and I thought, there is no way I am giving up this position just before the leap where I'm probably going to lose a lot of time cause if I don't go around the outside because I won't clear it. And I may, I may or may not have forced him off the track there. I didn't want to give up that spot. Second time round, I was just an absolute spud. I cross-jumped him over one of the tabletops and took him out again, which I do apologise for. Um, you know what, for a one-time event, I think I rode more aggressive than I ever have done, which surprisingly worked out in my favour. Usually when I try riding and aggressive with people, I get some horrible like net code delay and I ended up going up flying and they have no issue at all. So again, very, very lucky day all around. All right, there was some countries that had some really standout performances, in my opinion. Um, Brazil rode incredibly. Lucas rode really well. Feitosa rode really well. And I think Bordim might have been the weak link on that team, but he still put in some solid results. They just didn't manage to get the job done overall. Um, France rode very, very well. Matteo was absolutely dominating Moto 1, but ran out of fuel on the last lap. I literally passed him in the second to last corner on the last lap. He was leading by quite some margin. Um, but he had to push it from so far away. Uh, Alpha ran out of fuel as well for Puerto Rico, so did McChicken, he ran out of fuel. And I was very, very surprised by just how much fuel was actually being used. Uh, hang on, let me work out which way around this goes. I think it goes the opposite way to which I'm going right now. Let's have a look at the face of this finish line. And yes, I'm correct. Oh, backflip. Unintentional, love it. Um, yeah, so many people ran out of fuel. Oh god, I'm getting game crashing sounds over these logs. I think it might be a matter of time. We'll we'll see how it goes. I'm only gonna do one lap of this. I don't I don't want my game to crash on me. Oh my Jesus. Lord help me. Lord have mercy on my soul. Okay. Objects and MX bikes. Love to see it. I'm just gonna rejoin here and we're gonna turn around. Okay, so enduro cross track. <clears throat> a little bit risky. I'm gonna go around these. I don't think they're designed to be going up and over. Let's try the tires out. Oh the tires are absolutely fine. Oh, it's no problem at all. It's just them uh, them concrete odd thingies, whatever you want to call them, barriers. So, stick to the tyres, boys. Don't oh, don't go off the trail. Um, so many people ran out of fuel in Moto 1. So I ran... Usually I think I run about 7 litres on the 450. And I had no idea how much fuel to run on the 250. Not something that I... Uh, I don't often do 30 minute plus 2 motos on 250s, so I, it was a bit foreign to me. So I put in seven and a half liters, I think, and I finished Moto One with 0 0.9 liters left. So who knows if we crossed the finish line at a different time and had to do an additional lap, it'd have been a massive, massive difference there. Oh, I could have run out of fuel as well, and then we would have been, especially down bad, as we wouldn't have been able to drop holes as a result. I'm going to work my way over to the sand track before I get any game crash issues on there, because I don't fancy rebooting the game and having having some drama. Which way around does this go? This goes this way, by the looks of it, so let's have a little ride. And also, I want to say, I'm not sure why the gas gas doesn't get much love, because... It was absolutely barking for me yesterday. Um, I ran completely stock suspension. The only thing that I changed on the entire bike was obviously putting on that 120 rear tyre. I left the front as the stock mid-soft. Uh, I then changed my gearing ever so slightly as well. Absolutely everything else, all stock, all of the geometry, swing arm length, everything, all stock. Even run mid, um, what was it, mid-map, mid-mapping, whatever you want to call it. So, gas gas, hidden gem, absolute barker. We will see what happens when the Beta 18 OEM bikes uh, release. So I'm not, I have no idea when that's going to be or a time frame on that. But I'm hoping it will be in the next couple of months or so. I can only uh, only speculate on that one. I'm afraid I have no insider information. I'm not part of that. Uh, not part of that click. I know the boys are being very very secretive because I have got a bit of a mouth on me, haven't I? Uh, I just want to say. So yesterday's video in regards to the 
beta 18 OEMs, uh, beta 18 game, sorry, um, I didn't have time to kind of re-edit it and redo it and such, so it just released as it was, the game, well the beta was actually delayed a day, so it sh the beta should be out the day that you're watching this, although obviously I can't speak for Poposo, I'm hoping that he uh, sticks to the time that he's, he's told us, but not much I can do about that. Yeah, I didn't have time to go through and re-edit and do that video and stuff, just with nations and everything. Uh, time got away from me, and then literally the day before that, I I've not got off COD for like the last two days as well. I'm very, very bad. I do apologise. But this, oh, this soundtrack, I can already tell, so, so nice. Even on a 250, actually, I'm not really getting slowed down as much as I thought I would. Now, it does sound like normal sand traction, just with the sound of the the wheels on the dirt. I can, I can literally hear it sounds like sand. It doesn't feel as slippery as other sand tracks do, which I'm not too sure why. I'm not sure if he's done anything weird and wonderful with it, or with different like soil layers or what, but it feels really, really nice. And it's really nice as well that, for the most part so far, I seem to be able to either wheelie my way round or double round the track, which on a sand track is exactly what you want. Oh my Jesus, that was close. This, we got... I've even got a little start area back there behind us. Now, he, I did want to mention that the Arena Cross track is the only track actually that's got timing right now. Uh, I'm not sure if that will be updated in the future. I, I, have, I have no idea if there's any plans on doing so. Uh, but if you are going to ride this, this sand track or the Enduro Cross track, just bear in mind that your times are not going to be recorded. So if you do it, I would say just, just do it with a, a group of mates and just do it for fun. No need to, uh, no need to try out anything. But surprisingly... Oh, sand tracks have really, really grown on me in recent months on this game. I used to be a massive uh, hater of anything sand, IRL, MX Sim, MX Bikes, but I'm not sure what it is, what's changed in me, sand on MX Bikes for me recently. I seem to do really, really well on it, seem to manage to flow around the track and, and ride well, and it's probably some of the most fun racing you can do on the game once you get a flow going. That, I think that is the key thing, is once you get a flow going, that is that is the very, very important part, because if you haven't got a flow, then... Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to be wobbling all over the place. So, rip, rip, bozo, hold the L, um, get barked on, and that's that's about it. Right, I'm going to do one more lap of this, and then I think I'm going to work my way over to that uh, that jump track and give that a couple of laps as well. Very interested to see if I can get a clean run on there because I'm I'm not one for my usual free ride stuff, but it looks straightforward for the most part. I think it'll purely just be a case of once you understand just kind of the distances that you need to jump on each jump, I think it should be A-OK. -okay. I love how he's kind of got lines crossing over each other. You, know, you can go inside to outside or outside and cut down to the inside. This adds that realism factor that I really, really love on this game. Let's go, Skrr! Another reason why I was really happy that, oh, MXON was in the rain as well, because it actually made the 250s feel like 250 speed. Now, the only, I only have one complaint. The actual track itself rode absolutely fine. Uh, I think they've done a good job with the erode. The track eroded fairly well. Uh, but I, I, I still stand by the fact, I said this when the track first dropped, is I think it might have been a little bit too easy. Um, I think it, the track was very, very start dependent. So if you had a bad start, it was so difficult to like gain back time because uh, everyone's lap times are really, really close together. And I know, especially on a 250, I can't speak for the 450s because I've not ridden it yet. I barely had to let off the throttle anywhere. You know, once I was planted in a corner, that's it, I was golden. And I, I think after on, on Redbud, so just after the sand rollers, from there all the way until, you know, that tiny little, uh, that, that, sh that steep small double before the uphill triple or about around the middle of the track. Between those two points, I didn't actually have to shut off at all other than a tiny, tiny little bit going into one or two of the corners. The rest of the time, I could just hold right trigger and crank her over. So you can imagine, trying to gain time on people when the track's that fast, very hard to do, which is why I'm so, so happy at the good starts that I managed to get. Um, the rain actually made the starts a lot easier on a 250. Usually you've got to like, double clutch it just to stop yourself doing a backflip and the front tyre coming up, but this time, absolutely fine. Just second gear, sat down, lean forwards, and go. No no issue. The front wheel barely comes off the floor, but not enough to cause you any grief. So I was a very, very happy man, and massive uh, massive props to Hells for getting his win in the one race that he done. I imagine he was probably very, very stressed out after having his PC crashing multiple times, but also thank you to Alpha for helping him get that sorted so we could actually compete properly, because it would have been very, very disheartening if we done that well and lost because of PC issues. And then big shout out to Cam as well, his, uh, his very first nation alongside Hurls. But going into it, I think he 
probably considered himself to be the weak link, but to my knowledge, he certainly grinded out the game for uh, for the week beforehand and put in the hours to, to ride well. And he certainly did. He brought home a second place and a fifth place, I believe, in his respective motos. And then, yeah, I finished second in the second moto and got a sixth in the first moto. I'm a little disappointed by that sixth because I made a lot of stupid mistakes. There was uh, one, there was a death hole that going into the sand rollers and I must have crashed about three laps in a row doing exactly the same thing. And usually I'm an advocate of learn from your mistakes. I don't know if it was just heat of the moment or what, but I was I was riding really, really poorly towards the back end of that. So I'm, I'm very happy that I wasn't the reason that we lost. Right, let's do this jump line. Already I can tell you that feels so nice just booting you up into the air i'm kind of hitting everything a little bit like half throttle i don't want to i don't want to flat land but at the same time i don't want to oh, jump too short either let's rock it round to the left here i'm sure we're going to get some interesting free ride stuff people probably manually manualing that entire thing oh god i, I you know i knew that was going to be slippery and yeah i still lent over all the way and then oh that's a tiny tiny drop off there does this have collisions Oh, thank God, it doesn't. Jesus. <laughs> I think he's just saved my life there by taking collisions out of that digger. Uh, I think you can agree. A, so I, I am, I'm going to call this a compound rather than a track because it is, you know, it's got it's got multiple tracks in this. The arena cross track, sick. The finish line jump is so, so much fun with how high it sends you. The enduro cross track, like the layout, the tyres feel fine. Um, there's, the logs are a little bit funky. I can't lie, the, the logs cause some very weird uh, kicks of the tyre. Um, but I'm sure if, if you take your time and really work it out, you will be A-OK -okay on that. Sand track, incredible. Probably one of my favourite sand tracks on the game. Just going to throw that out there, which is quite a difficult thing to do because I am a massive Learop and Lommel enjoyer. I think they're both incredible tracks. But there's something about what he's done with the corners around here where they kind of cross over each other. Very, very nice. Very, very satisfying. And then this jump track here... Uh, it, it, you can just shut your mind off and just just have some fun and and throw down some some loops all in all for a first track or compound release i can't expect any more and i'm very very blown away by what he's done here um he says that it's taken him four to five months to complete i'm not sure if that's four to five months of just solid work or if that's been on and off i would assume it was on and off um but you can tell he is, he's, he's, he's very detail orientated, is typical Canadian. Anytime he releases gear, he never half asks it either. He's always doing uh, custom stitching, custom norms, and all of that good stuff. So he's a real perfectionist and puts a lot of time and effort into what he does and will never release anything unless he is satisfied with it. So thank you very much for giving this track to us. Thank you, you guys, for watching. If you have played this, let me know what you think. What is your favourite part of this compound? Got to be the soundtrack for me. I thought it would be the enduro side of things, but. Yeah, them logs are a little bit wonky for my liking, so we'll, we'll see um, see if anything changes with those moving forwards. I know that uh, Resolute has some different different log models, which I might have, which might have slightly better collisions. So I'm not sure if that's something he wants to give out or Trek could be updated. Other than that, it's really really good effort, and I would go as far to say that this is the best first track release I've ever seen in this game, and that has got to be a very very difficult feat to do. But it's just it's a testament to his detail and the work that he puts in so thank you typical canadian thank you you guys for watching if you have enjoyed the video if i can just ask if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new it would be really really appreciated i'm trying to get forty thousand by the new year and i think we're just over a thousand away at the point of me recording this so plenty of uh, plenty of time to go and it'll be it'll be such an achievement for me in just over a year of doing doing this youtube thing so if you could do Feel free to subscribe. You can unsubscribe at any time if you don't like what I'm doing, but it would mean a lot to me. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you guys are up to. I am now away for almost two weeks, so I'm going to be a little bit inactive here. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the videos I've got recorded regardless. See you next time. Peace.